Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about Vitamin E. The main dietary sources of Vitamin E are vegetable oils. However, coconut and olive oils are low in Vitamin E. Some Vitamin E is present in cereals, dairy products and eggs. Now, Vitamin E activity may decrease with processing, storage or heating. Now, vitamin E deficiency may occur in the following circumstances Prematurity, cholesterol liver disease, pancreatic insufficiency, A beta lipoproteinemia, short bowel syndrome, isolated inborn error of vitamin E metabolism, and increased use of vitamin E due to the oxidant stress. Vitamin E deficiency shortens the red cell half-life and this may result in hemolytic anemia. Now, chronic vitamin E deficiency results in a progressive neurologic disorder. In this condition, there is loss of deep tendon reflexes, loss of coordination, vibratory and position sensations. There may also be nystagmus, weakness, scoliosis, and retinal degeneration. Now, in premature infant, vitamin E deficiency may contribute to oxidant injury of the lung, retina, and brain. This may also result in brain hemorrhage. Now, vitamin E is a family of compounds which are called tocopherols. There are four major forms of tocopherols, alpha, gamma, beta, and delta. Alpha tocopherol has the highest biologic activity. Now, vitamin E can donate an electron to a free radical molecule to stop the oxidation reactions. And this oxidized vitamin E is then reduced by ascorbic acid that is vitamin C or glutathione. And so, the reduced tocopherol is able to remove another free radical. Now, the nutrients that participate in these antioxidant defenses include beta-carotene, vitamin C, selenium, copper, manganese, and zinc. Vitamin E is located at specific site in the cell to protect the polyunsaturated fatty acids in the membrane lipids from lipid peroxidation, and so it protects the thiol groups and nucleic acids. Vitamin E also functions as a cell membrane stabilizer. It may function in the electron transport chain and it may also modulate chromosomal expression. Now, vitamin E nutritional status can be partially assessed by measuring the serum vitamin E level. Normal range for the children is 3 to 15 mg per milliliter. Now the ratio of serum vitamin E to total serum lipid is normally more than 0.8 mg per gram. Now sensitivity of the erythrocyte to hydrogen peroxide induced hemolysis is also used as a test of vitamin E status. Now these are suggested dietary intake of vitamin E for children of different ages. For 0 to 6 months, adequate intake of vitamin E is 4 mg per day and for 7 to 12 months, adequate intake is 5 mg per day. Now the recommended dietary allowance of vitamin E for children between 1 to 3 years of age is 6 mg per day and for 4 to 8 years of age it is 7 and 9 to 13 years of age it is 11 mg per day. Now it is important to remember that requirement of vitamin E increases if dietary polyunsaturated fatty acid increases. Between 0.4 mg and 0.5 mg of vitamin E is needed per gram of polyunsaturated fatty acid in the diet. Now for the vitamin E deficiency which results from most of the malabsorption syndrome require large oral doses up to 100 international unit per kilogram per day and for a beta lipoproteinemia 100 to 200 international unit per kilogram per day of vitamin e are needed 
Now, vitamin E therapy in ischemia reperfusion injury and in the prevention of intracranial hemorrhage in the preterm infant still remain controversial. Toxic effect of the intravenously administered vitamin E in a dose of about 25 to 100 mg per kilogram per day intravenously can result in necrotizing enterocolitis and liver toxicity. But liver toxicity probably may result from polysorbate AT which is used as a solubilizer. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.